We are back here at the Rainbow Six North American League Analyst Desk. Doe and Jesse Jacob Super here with you for the week. And we're going to do Space Station Gaming versus Parabellum. Now, Space Station was able to get a win last week, uh, but it was an overtime win. So certainly trying to look a little bit better this week. Parabellum, though, looked incredible. New players, Asian and Doc, joining the squad. But it seems like, if anything, this team is putting up better results than what we saw on Stage 2 already. Yeah, I mean, Parabellum are off to an amazing start. I think they're the most surprising yeah. team to, to be in such a strong position. They didn't have easy opponents in the first week, but they still managed to take both of them down, six points on the board. They've got to be very happy about that. Only second um, based on some uh, round differential tie differences. But right. ultimately, I mean, they're feeling very, very good with the new pickups at stage. I just love the fact that we're seeing more new talent still get an opportunity and to flourish immediately straight out of the mm -hmm. gate is always nice when you're you're looking for proof that these new pickups, guys that have only played at the tier two level, are actually able to carry their weight in gold. And they did against two very, you know, considered top tier opponents. The only difference being it was the same map. So I like the fact that we're seeing initial success, but I still want to see growth out of a Parabellum team that has shown at times that they're able to get out of like the fifth, fifth to seventh place gutter. If they can do that here on a different battleground, I'm going to be way more impressed. Yeah, Parabellum and SSG coming in the match with some changes. Obviously, Parabellum has two, but Parabellum look a lot better than I think they did last stage. The question for them is they've only played Border. So what do they look like on the other maps? And what right. is Space Station going to look like a week later? I mean, maybe we'll find out, right? Because, I mean, Space Station's still uh, kind of dealing with their own roster swap, like you mentioned. Sky is out, Yeti in, coming from your organization to join uh, Space Station now. But uh, so when we talked to Space Station, you know, we asked kind of about, like, how things are how things are going, how's it been like incorporating Yeti, why incorporate Yeti to begin with? But we do have some words from some of the Space Station players in the video we're going to check out. Let's do that right now. I just expect to win, pretty much. I expect to play well, and I expect for us to show what we're really capable of. Um, I have high expectations this stage. I've kind of gotten off my entry role, which is what I've played pretty much my whole career these last couple stages, and I've played more of a flex, like, lurk role. And I think I was good at it, but I don't think it's what I'm best at. And so now in stage three, you'll see me back on the entry, and I think I think this is gonna be my best stage in a while. Um, I'm expecting uh, for me to have more of, like, an explosive uh, season, hopefully, you know, that's the plan. Um, I need, I need to prove it to me. Like I need to see it. And I re I mean, I'm working hard like outside of game and I need, I, I just need to see it for myself. I did, I felt so good at Saudi for Gamers 8 and I felt like I was at a very good point in my game. And uh, so I'm excited to going into this, you know, kind of feeling, feeling like I'm, I'm back kind of thing. What do I expect from my teammates? Beast mentality. To be a winner. <laughs> You know, the same thing I expect as I'm always. It's not always performance-based. Only thing I can really expect from my teammates is have good energy and good comms on game day. Make sure everything's clear and uh, let our IGL, you know, guide us through the rounds. And we, if we play our game, we'll be fine. Top four. I expect the very same thing. Uh, I expect them to, to come out with fire and, and to show them, to want to show everyone what we're really capable of. I'm sure everyone's feeling the exact same way. So that was kind of a through line with the Space Station players when I talked to them a couple weeks ago in Vegas. They were all saying top four, we're feeling really good with Yeti in the mix. Uh, the results haven't necessarily gone their way quite yet. Of course, they do have one win, but again, it was in overtime, not worth as many points. They need to pick it up this week. They need to kind of really make things work. Because I feel like with a player like Yeti, uh, you, you have less of a sort of incorporating the player time than with other players. He's not a rookie. He's mm -hmm. not new to the stage. He's been around for a long time. Should be able to get things rolling a little bit quicker. And with the kind of expectations they have for him, being that vibes guy, you know, being the one to keep people positive, um, you know, you want to see that change come into effect quick, you know? Yeah, I think with Yeti going to SSG, it made sense to them just because uh, you know, they were a team that kind of had trouble. They, I mean, unfortunately, they've already kind of lost a lead this season. They had, I believe, a 6-3 advantage against OXG and then yeah, going overtime. Right. But the idea behind bringing in a player like Yeti, he's a great vibes player. He's a great teammate. He keeps people checked in. He's not going to get rattled. Um, so I think that's, you know, kind of a long-term project with if it's a mental kind of block on SSG. But I think Yeti's the right guy to kind of help steer that in the right direction. 
Yeah, Space Station, obviously, uh, you know, not the best start to the stage that they would have wanted. I think although they didn't achieve their goal in stage two, they still had a lot of upsides. Last stage, they were the second best attacking team of all in all of North America, 53%. They had a lot of great creative attacking strategies. Through the first week this stage, though, they have fallen off down to just 37% on the attacking rate. The only team worse than that is Beast Coast, and Beast Coast, I believe, are sitting at literally zero. Literally zero. So it's, you know, it's, it's a low <laughs> bar. SSG currently needs to get that one up. And you look at the changes, you look at the stats as well. Last stage, Space Station had more grenade kills than anybody else. 15 nade kills. That's 70% more than the average and 36% more than the next highest team. Mm -hmm. A lot of that was rampy. Rampy by himself would be fourth if he was his own team last stage with grenades. And obviously, you take a look at this meta, one of the biggest changes we've had is just the lack of nades. Finca nades don't exist anymore. Um, Maverick nades don't exist anymore. Nook is banned in most of the matches, so her nades are often taken out of the field as well. And so I feel like with SSG losing some of that explosive utility, that has hurt their attacks, and we haven't really seen them bounce back from that yet. Watching that OXG game on Cafe last week firsthand, I just keep on thinking that everyone would be looking at that win a lot better if they hadn't blown that three round lead and then allowed OXG to get four in a row, bring it to a point where they'd have to win their last two in overtime to actually win the darn thing. And they probably also would then be looking at the Skyscraper game against the Sonics, which was only a 7-5 as that close of a victory. Instead, now we look at this, this team as one that's unable to finish until literally they put their nose to the grindstone, find that last thing that works. And that's not always something that you can rely on. It's nice that you're able to come out with a victory, but still, that win, even though it's a win, is still probably going to put a lot of bad taste in SSG fans' mouths until they start getting a lot more of these problems ironed out. But in space, no one can taste? No, that's not <laughs> Is that a rap uh, I, don't, I don't think that's how it works. Never mind. No one can hear you scream, Noah. <laughs> Looks like all the fans at home screaming right now. I can't hear them, and that's the important thing. Let's talk about Parabellum, the other team on the other side of the arena. Two new additions in Asian and Doc, and uh, they have worked out very well. Two strong wins over two strong teams. But, you know, can a team like this keep the momentum going? I feel like there's obviously a lot of talent on there, but you've still got sort of that new player thing that you're working in. You know, I feel like that's a team where you could run in to a couple down moments, right, where the, the uh, cracks start to show a little bit. Uh, and the, the nerves come through. Yeah, they've only played border so far, but there's still so much I like about this team. They're actually taking tag timeouts for one thing. It's something that we criticize them for two straight stages, but they've got Sonar behind them, who's actually able to dial things in when he realizes things are down, and they're doing a great job of capitalizing on it. On two straight border games, they're also allowing Doc to play more of a long angle smoke, which has freed Kool-Aid up to be a roam monster. That's a big reason for why he was able to secure MVP in the first place back in Playday 2. Their roams and timing make the most of their distraction potential. Sometimes they're still swinging a little bit more than is healthy. Sometimes you can definitely still tell the inexperience and the recklessness is still there, especially for the two new young gunners. But still, for Parabellum, it feels like the aggression is definitely on point. Yeah, I mean, Kool-Aid is arguably the best support player right now in NA. That's two stages in a row now, with this stage included, that he's kind of been, honestly, a kind of a, a support carry. And what's interesting to me is I've noticed they've made a little bit of a role change with Eska kind of getting off the sledge and going to the flank watch, and Vlaz moving to more of an aggressive sledge role. I feel like he's really been playing a lot more free with this kind of style, getting a lot of picks, and it makes him a lot more dangerous on tag. Yeah, Kool-Aid, our MVP, of course, from last play day. I thought he was very versatile on defense. I absolutely agree that he may be one of the best support players, if not the best in the league right now. He has been so impactful for Parabellum throughout this first week. I also think the rest of his teammates, though. I mean, you talked about uh, you talked about Blaz. The entry game has been really strong for both him and Doc. Parabellum, 70% opening pick rate overall. That's Doc being 4-0. All of those picks coming in on attack where he's playing Zofia. He's getting those opening kills back-to-back -to, -back to finish off X at the end of day two. He's having a lot of impact there. And then Blaz, 7-1 on entry. Fantastic wow. stat coming through there. Also, mostly on the attack, a couple of kills on the defense as well. Very consistent at finding multiple opening kills in both their game against Oxygen and against Xset. They played 11 total attacking rounds, and the only time they lost the opener was once when Blaz lost to Yaga, fair enough, and then once where they team killed Eska. So, all in all, they really don't struggle too much on the opener. All right, well, you know, we know they've played Border a couple times. Let's find out where they're going for this match right now. The map bands are in. 
And uh, no border ban yet from Space Station. Clubhouse and Villa first to get X'd out. Yeah, I would hope that most teams have already kind of learned from what we've seen Parabellum 2 against two very good teams on border. So, so long as we don't see it, huh. then I think Space Station are definitely going to be looking that way. They haven't taken it off the board yet. Instead, Space Station have gone for their own like permaban this whole year. If they have a permaban, it is still Villa. And then Oregon, one of their most played, is something that they don't want to allow Parabellum to look at any VODs for and actually use against them. So, still, I'm curious about where Space Station take us more than what Parabellum do because Parabellum's bands have usually been pretty telegraphed. They don't like Club, they don't like Bank, they don't like Sky. The fact that we're still seeing it up though at this point because there's a Chalet ban from SSG has me a little bit concerned about why we still haven't seen it taken out yet. Yeah, Cafe Theme Border, the two other maps we haven't really talked about there, both not ideal for Parabellum. Okay, we take a look at Cafe, three game losing streak throughout the year, and Theme Park, one that they have yet to win through two matches as well. You're uh, kidding me. They both uh, get banned okay. out though. Okay. So, I mean, okay. Theme Park, a map that SSG have uh, never played ever so they don't I guess want to uh, want to see that on the side of Parabellum maybe so some some surprises but yeah borders an interesting choice from Space Station uh, I mean to me this is a little bit of a baffling decision it maybe says something that SSG's map pool is just not really where it needs to be yet with Yeti taking a team that has not lost this map to this map when they have two new players they have not played any other map <laughs> I, I just don't understand the logic in it. Now, maybe SSG is thinking, hey, we've seen them play this map twice now. We can do some counters on it. But, like, it's a new team. <laughs> this is the only map they've shown they can play. Don't you want to, like, test yeah. them somewhere else? It's... It's honestly a baffling decision to me, but uh, I'm sure SSG have something in mind. I mean, obviously, Doc and Asian have played plenty of games on the other maps, too, but as far as NAL is concerned, Border is their comfort zone right exactly, now, yeah. you know? So you want to be able to do something that shifts them out of that comfort zone. I'm a little bit surprised, too, they would take them back to Border. It's, it's got to be, like you mentioned, they think they've just got enough tape on them, Space Station, to yeah. uh, try to try to win it with that. It is a comfy map for SSG as well, right? Four games throughout the year coming through for Space Station on Fair border. Enough. Played it once in stage one, three times in stage two. So it's not a map they're unfamiliar with, but yeah, when you look at your opponent's map pool, it is an interesting pick. Still wasn't the most impressive thing when they played it back in stage two. I remember when they were struggling against Mirage for those first couple of rounds and they were still trying to figure out how the hell are we meant to make this thing work. The one time they played it back in stage one was at a Astralis game where we figured maybe this is the time we see them added to their map pool. They did in stage two, but still, it's only a 50% win rate on the year. And even though I have more confidence in SSG's coaching staff to use VODs effectively. It's not to say Parabellum can't do the same thing. So this is still a really weird pick. I mean, honestly, we played them on border last stage. They were up 5-1 on us. We came back and beat them. I think that game we set yeah. the record for plants in a game. And no offense meant to Yeti, but in that game, Yeti was like 0-6 on entry. He was kind of the reason the game was even close. Did and he now he's on here? SSG. Jeez, yeah, man. He played Blackbeard. <laughs> right. yeah, so yeah, the one round. You know, yeah. Yeti's a great player, maybe just not on border, but this is, I guess, a redemption chance for him. Uh, yeah, good luck, SSG. All right. Well, uh, we're, we're trying to solve a tech issue right there over in Vegas real quick. So let's take a look at some more stats before we go further. Uh, we're going to take a look at the statistics for the newbies on the Parabellum squad. Doc and Asian coming up on a Challenger League. A lot of people excited about uh, seeing what they can do. And they've both put on a pretty great performance so far. Yeah, it's great to see the confidence from these two young players in their first week in. We talked a lot about the entries from both Doc and from Blaz, which has been a huge help for Parabellum. But I even think Asian, you go back to that very first game where they were playing, of course, on border. And it felt like he had a lot of impact late game, right? He was taking a lot of really smart fights, really did uh, get into those engagements with uh, with, with good gunplay and, uh, and good confidence. So love to see that from Asian. I think all in all, although he's negative on the entry, the team really picks up the slack in that regard. And his fragging power has been fantastic on attack. I think it's mostly the fact that he's a really good second guy right behind Blaz. I'm loving the fact that Blaz is stepping up to a point where Asian's still going to for an entry isn't that much of a problem. I still question whether 57% like 57 cost is something that you have to keep on focusing on as time goes on, but that's not really a number that they themselves are probably going to keep in, in the back of their heads too much. They just know they're winning. They've gone to the same map twice. They understand that they like their confidence level is already pretty high. I love what Doc is doing too, but I mostly love the fact that Blaz and Asian seem like they're turning into the real tip of the spear for a, power, for a Parabellum team that's been looking for a way to get into maps quickly. They've got a lot of early control and Asian is a huge reason why. Yeah, I've spoken to uh, Parabellum's coach a, a little bit in the past about these two and he honestly felt blessed that they were able to uh, get these two players and a lot of eyes, these were the two best available Challenger League level players. 
Asian was kind of considered a bit of a prodigy coming up and had a really nice stage in Challenger League with Luminosity. So I think Parabellum feel like a little bit lucky that they even were able to put this team together. And I always find it interesting where, you know, Parabellum did make two changes. They lost Gunner, who was a great player for them, literally team of the stage. So he's one of the five best players in the league. And then they let Penguin go, who was an IGL without, you know, maybe lacking a little bit of the fragging power. So to make up the difference with Gunner, they bring on two fraggers and you kind of even it out because maybe you're not getting the performance of Gunner, although Doc is playing great. Yeah. You're getting a better performance than Penguin was giving. So it evens it out and it kind of makes you more of a threat because now instead of maybe worrying about three or four players, you're worrying about five. Yeah, and as far as the shot calling stuff goes, uh, when I was talking to uh, Penguin a little bit in Vegas, he was saying he felt a little bit of the pressure on that to kind of step into that role, make some of those calls. And, you know, the shot calling, it seems like in Rainbow Six right now, has become more of a democratic thing than a, than a you know that's a word for unilateral it. thing. It's 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 more of a, a group calling than having just one IGL at this point for a lot of teams, isn't that right? Yeah, I, I mean you know obviously I even stepped down as IGL. Yeah. I just didn't feel like <laughs> I just don't feel like in the current meta you know with the attacker repick where before a round you can kind of you know what site it is as a team you probably have several different takes per site. You can just come up you know just say we'll do this take. And if you're a good enough player, you don't need to be micromanaged around the map, right? You know what to do, you know what to recognize, and you can make plays off of that. So if you have good communication, and if you're a smart enough player to recognize things that you can take advantage of, an IGL right now in this meta is just, to me, not that necessary. It's so interesting, and I mean, the, it's especially interesting because you have these new players coming in with less experience at the pro level to be able to kind of contribute to that kind of thing is is a, is a big extra burden that you don't see place on a lot of players. But they're handling it well. They're putting up good numbers. We'll see if Parabellum can keep that momentum going, though, against Space Station. But for now, we have to make some predictions. Oh, yes, it's time. And so first of all, as usual, we'll have our casters weigh in. Pengu and Entero still waiting to cast this match, but also to give us their choice for who they think is going to win it. What's it going to be? I, I guess I'll go first on this one. Uh, okay. I look at the fact that Parabellum won their first match 7-4 on border, and then they won their second match 7-5. And, so... and that they're probably going to go to overtime, but does SSG have what it takes? I want to say yes, but I don't think they do. So I'm going to go with Parabellum. Yeah, I'm okay. looking at, you know, the first two plays, and I'm thinking Parabellum looked really good. SSG still had some shakes they got to figure out. So uh, BB seems like the obvious choice. And I, I agree with Super, like, going to border for a third time. You know, SSG choosing to let them basically go for a third time. I'm like, why? Maybe counterplay? Whatever. But I also personally would have liked if SSG challenged the map pool more of Parabellum. I think PB comes out ahead here. They're going to take the top. All right, so uh, there you go. The numbers game kind of favoring uh, Parabellum right now. That's going to be our choice for our two casts as well. Thanks for your input. It's always valued. I want you to know that. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. We're going to check in with them in a moment. Now to talk to our analysts here. Uh, you know, you got to go last, last yeah, time, yeah. Super. So you're going to go first this time. What's it going to be? So. I guess I'm going to be a bit of a contrarian here, and it kind of doesn't make sense because I just like spent the last segment just blasting SSG. Uh -oh. okay. But mm -hmm. I'm going to trust in the minds and the thought process of SSG. Really? It's extremely <laughs> risky, trust me. But <laughs> I'm going to pick SSG to win this game, and the reason I'm doing so is they know Parabellum has won this map both times. They know it's the only map they've played. So in my mind, the only way you take this team to this map is if you have just the ultimate counter strategy, you're just, you're certain you're gonna win. Yeah. So either I'm the fool or you're all fools because you're gonna pick Parabellum. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I don't I don't get to choose at all. I just let fate decide. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, free of this one, but Jesse Jacob. The coin's Jacob. the fool. Exactly, well, it was in state. Wanna go first? Sure. I'm happy to be a fool. If Parabellum lose this one, then I think we're all <laughs> fools. I'll go PB as well. I agree, the map maybe right. not the pick for, for Space Station, but mostly those entries from uh, Parabellum, the way that We've seen Blaz, Asian, Doc, everybody play on this map from PB. He's been so, so good. I got to imagine that'll continue this game. See, I do trust that Space Station would not have gone to this map if they didn't figure that there was something in the tank. But think about the sure. obstacles they have to overcome. They still have to incorporate a new guy into the lineup that probably still needs more time to bake. And if you're going to take Parabellum to a map that they've already played and won twice in good fashion against good teams, you also probably have to change up the playbook that made me really, like, unconsciously unconfident about the way they played it in the last stage. So if you have all three of those things to do in Parabellum are already really good on this map. Screw it, dude. I'm taking PB because SSG just have too many things to figure out right now. All right, there you go. Well, uh, prepare, Parabellum means up. Uh, at least. <laughs> yeah, there you go. 
Parabellum means prepare for war. SSG seems to be prepared for Parabellum, possibly. We'll find out what the coin prepared says. For it's prepared be for war? Prepared for preparing for war. Prepared for the ones who are prepared for war. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't read Art of War. Uh, it's going to be Space Station Gaming Heads. Parabellum, Tails. Let's flip it. Nice. Oh, thank you. It's Heads. Space right. Station Gaming. All right. The coin uh, going edge. with That's SSG. We'll see what uh, see what it's going to be. Now, uh, you know, the coin and Super did both, uh, were both the only uh, one correct the picks. Coin. The first one, that's true. You're one yeah. with the coin today. Let's see if the fans are as well. No, the fans are I'll going with Parabellum as fools, well. Fools, all of you, honestly. There you go, once, a, once again. We'll see who takes it, though. We got a community poll as well to take a look at in a, a moment here. There it is. Who will secure more plants, Bosco or Kool-Aid? Hmm. Hmm. Well, well, Kool-Aid shoots people, Bosco doesn't, so... Yeah. Are you going for the plan or are you going for the kill? <laughs> there you go. I was wondering if it meant out of game, like who's going to have like a more of a garden or maybe some succulents because they're in Vegas, you know? It's kind of Kool Aid hot, hot speaks to me as a gardener. Yeah. I could see it. I, I could see it. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, not like the bonsai tree type of gardener, but you know, you have, have like a cactus you water once a month. Something like that. There you go. Well, on that note, uh, we got a quick break and then we'll find out who actually is the most prepared to get the win on border. Is it going to be Space Station? Is it going to be Parabellum? Tune in in just a few minutes to find out here on the Rainbow Six North American League. Don't turn this to no controversy. It's my boo. I can make a quarter million off a high cool, and I can make another quarter off at times two. If it's money on the table, I'll be on it like Bobby or Epic. You peep the aesthetic. It's hard to forget it. I hear you talking, but you're hardly right. I'm the voice of your prototype. Mm. Summertime and then why?
tell her throw that start her on it's a throwback it's just a straight road i don't even pay toes the boy a genius and i ain't talking yay though it's been a living legend since i was like a day old i remember days though listening to j cole i remember days though listening to drake though had to up my profile had to up my payroll getting too high yeah you know i had time going to this map are space station fools for letting this map through or geniuses are they well, prepared I, see i was i was fielding the question to you nicholas which one do you think honestly i think super made a great point towards the end saying that if you're gonna take pp to the board for a third time you are so prepared but then we gotta talk about is that enough sometimes right because with these young gunners that are being picked up from various teams for the stage three sometimes you just gotta shoot straighter and that's exactly what pb did in play day one and play day two they were up against great foes but ultimately could just shoot a little bit harder back and they were winning in great fashion against both oxg and xz while two teams with new looks parabellum picking up both doc and asian in the off season yeti joining space station i don't really know exactly i think it's way too early for us yeah. to talk about who which team rather has benefited the most from these roster changes sonics but you know i, I think if you look at all of the teams that have made changes so far in the off season sonics there's one team that really stood above the rest but parabellum look much better with doc and asian on that roster can't really say the same for space station with yeti just yet not sure that yeti plugs the holes in space station's team but there's still that time to get acclimated so we're in the ban phase fultz has apparently already crashed that is unfortunate parabellum starting on defense they get very first ban and even though fultz isn't in the server we can still continue onwards with these operator bands oh ying and twitch very different from the Capitao Thatcher ban that occurred in our previous matchup. That they are. I mean, the uh, the Ying is a good old stable ban towards SSG. Uh, Hot and cold used to be an absolute menace with that back, but in stage one and stage two and in the year. And SSG in general likes to play around that operator quite a lot on their attack inside. Twitch, of course, is a target ban towards Parabellum specifically. And then you have Sami. That's more of a stable ban on various maps to deny lands of sight because you can restructure the map quite drastically. Almost like a throwable castle barricade they can go anywhere in the map really and mira follows troop to at the end again one of those operators that on border there are so many long lines of sight that mirror windows can really establish and utilize so we want to see that being removed from the game we'll pause for a player crash we'll get right back into it momentarily shouldn't take too long and thankfully as i say 
it was before the game started that we can do this, so there's no abruptions, hopefully, during the game. Have you ever been to the eSports arena? No. I was going to say, I've never been there either. (laughs) Neither of us have ever physically been there. You've never been there for like content or something? No. I I mean, it's in the Luxor, right? I I stayed at the Luxor the very first time I ever went to Vegas, but I am reasonably certain that was before the eSports arena existed. That would have been back Mm. in... That would have been back fall slash winter 2015. I think it was like oh. October 2015. I say the Luxor. It was actually before the hockey arena had been had been built in Vegas as well, if you just want to go back. It was before the Golden Knights were even a thing, as far as I recall. But okay. I'd like to get to see it at some point. I'm hopeful. We can go together. You know, I, I live like a 20-minute drive from there. I mean, saying you live like a 20-minute drive in Vegas doesn't give me any indication as to where you live. No, but it means that it's a 20-minute drive, which means you come to my place, we can go together. You invite me over? I'll invite you over. Are you inviting me over? I mean, if you want, we can fly out Thursday. We'll go back together, holding hands or something. I don't know, whatever you want to. We share a bed. That's too far for first dates. Um, We can work towards it as a goal, but... We can work towards it as a goal? Yeah, (laughs) but let's start with the hands. All right, thanks. I appreciate that. Anyway... On to the topic, as now Fultz seems to be in the lobby and everything is in working order. The one thing that I will say is Space Station banned out the Azami. I think that's a smart idea. Azami enables a style of defense in the security part of this map. Yeah. That is so potent and so strong. Instead, now you're going to have to rely on deployable shields and you're going to have to rely on just other gadgetry that you have. Goyo being brought out right away, I think, is a great operator for that. The 20 seconds of flames that come from those canisters being broken open really do feel a lot longer than 20 seconds, especially oh, yeah. in a post plant. You're going to take a lot of damage if you try to trudge through. Yeah, and he's got four of them, so it really adds up if you want to stack multiple of them in the same ish area. It's a bit of a cheeky offset pick right in the window. Getting some information for the team members of SSG. They are starting on the attack inside, which I think you would like to if you choose to counterplay, right? You studied Parabellum's defensive setups, or at least we hope that SSG has, and they should have a pretty good idea going into this as to what they want to be doing to pick that apart. I know that we don't often want to talk about like skins and all that jazz, but I really appreciate Doc running Jinxie's Charm. If you haven't tuned into Jinxie's oh. content, he is pretty great. He's and hilarious, in fact. He's, he's very, very funny. And Foxy actually just got a charm in the game. You and I have had charms in the game for ages. I actually think our charms came out at the same time, if I remember correctly, alongside, uh, what was it, Justin and Zig. All four of us oh, joined at yeah. the exact same time. Yeah. So how coincidental. Either way, congratulations to Foxy. I believe he's co-streaming this. I could be wrong. Super also has a charm in the game, who is currently guest analyzing. Very first pick of this matchup is going to go to Fultz. That's the Yana finding some success. Down goes Kool-Aid. The Aruni gadgets will continue, but the actual Aruni will not. Yeah, and of course, getting that opening kill is always favorable, especially on border. That is all about the gunfights. It's almost like the second coastline, if you will, where sure, strats, they play a factor, but how you move through the map, how you clear these positions, and how you can play together as a team to get those opening kills is a very, very important factor, especially on Armory, right? All these open lines aside, very long angles, but Asian, he trades it back onto Fultz, the 4v4, even numbers again. But SSG, they're looking for that archives execute with the Osa Shield. God, what a nuisance Hot and Cold has been so far. Final Talon Shield goes down with the oh. ADW in hand. He's alive? He'll be in a good spot. I honestly cannot believe that Eska lived. Down goes Asian to Yeti. The coverage seems to be okay, but now oh. Doc is in a reflex test. As he gets collapsed upon by Bosco, now it's Doc with the Bailiff in hand. No damage to be done. Didn't Super say Bosco can't fire back? Yeah, well, two kills suggests otherwise. And <laughs> I don't know what Yeti is saying, but that was a lot of spit coming out of his mouth. <laughs> Space Station up one nothing. Oh my God! Yeah, looking good for SSG for a great start. I loved how, I loved how Hot and Cold using the offset throughout the entirety of that round, securing the east stairs first, denying the spawn peak as well, and the aggression towards the windows, and then getting into the bomb side and establishing a strong position as well as a plant there towards the end. I mean, it, if this continues happening, then Parabellum have to change their approach. Right? They need impacts on the table. And right now, Blaz and Asian, they both have them available. The question is, will they spend them on rotations throughout the map? There goes the first one from Blaz. Or will it be Kool-Aid 
and Doc using their secondary shotguns and melee punches to establish those rotations instead. Because whenever you are thinking you're against an Ossa, you always want to keep two impacts at minimum in pocket, preferably one on each member because if one person were to fall early, for example, let's say Blast used both impact grenades and Asian has two, well, if Asian is the one who ends up dying, then you have zero impacts. So spreading out that utility is a really good approach to this so that multiple members can respond accordingly and as I mentioned, in case anybody were to die. But it's going to be a similar setup on Parabellum. They believe that with this impact change and with the right player in the position to deny those Aussie shields, that the round will play out differently. Joke's on you though, Parabellum, because SSG, they're not bringing the Aus this time around. Now, they attack a repick, so Parabellum will have no idea about this just yet, but the line is being brought out with the Nook. That's going to be the two operators that SSG will use to kind of force their way through the map right now. Hot and Cold was on Aussie, now on a hard breach instead, so SSG playing that flex game quite well so far. Ooh, the Nook comes Ooh. back. It's not usually rampy on this operator. I think Foltz is the go-to for Space Station. Mm -hmm. That's 40 seconds, 45 seconds now that have been used, and you have to burn those Aruni Gates, the Surya Gates, or as Ace likes to call them, Laser Gates. Laser Gates. What, that is a horrendous attempt at an I'm impression. Very sorry. Yes, you should be apologizing to the good people, even the people in this chat who like anime. They deserve an apology <laughs> as well. But It's a bit far. <laughs> Well, I, I, I pissed off the weebs by I saw. <laughs> on Twitter by asking why all, but not all, but most of the new R6 share skins are all anime. Look at this. Rampy is on the hunt, just like those kids in my Twitter mentions. Down they go. Yeti will need to be retrieved. Rampy can do just that, but Eska misses out on an opportunity with the vector in hand to secure a kill. Down goes Asian. Parabellum having some problems right now as Space Station are looking more formidable than we've seen before on these entries. And it has unfortunately depleted the reserves of Parabellum. We've lost two very strong players and the two newest players to the team. It certainly looks like SSG are finding these openings and they're pretty much like premeditated. It seems like they're going to these rounds saying, okay, round one, we forced the Ossa. Round two, let's force the Nook and then just look for that opening kill time and time again. And I mean, it is only round number two. And as you see, they haven't won it just yet. But it does look like there's a good plan in, in motion right now for them. A lot of decisiveness as well. Kool-Aid was MVP last play. He has to get quite aggressive right now because his position is compromised. Gets the first kill, does not get the second. He flicks him at the last moment. And it's SSG and Hot and Cold who ends up picking up the pieces. Blast and Esk in a 2v4 now. And with a member of SSG on Sandwich Appel, the cross has been cut. Once they get in, it's hard to play that retake. Esk C4 could be huge in this round. they got 35 seconds to play with. Esk can emerge here, but again, a really tough spot to be in. The low HP from Space Station is the only real saving grace at the moment for Parabellum, but they've lost Blast now too, and it's Esk to capitalize on nothing. Hot and cold, the final kill. Space Station now up 2-0. Man, Parabellum can just not roam the way that they want. They are getting smothered on this entry by Space Station. That they are. They really are. And I mean, I, I believe it's going to be happening as well. There might be a tactical timeout being called here. And honestly, if you are Parabellum, I mean, you're only down 0-2. It's not the end of the world. It's not. But you clearly need to make a drastic change in your approach because you are being played right now. And yep, Parabellum, they are indeed calling for a tactical timeout to change this around and see what they can do. On border, it is arguable, and this is always tough because you can refer to statistics, you can look at the current meta, the old meta, whatever, but throughout history, border has always really been an attacker favorite map because of how the long angles work. You got zoom scopes, of course, you got all these pieces of gadgetry, whether it's shields or flashbang smokes or grenades. So if Parabellum can just get like a 2-4 split on their defense and have a great attacking side, we're looking at OT essentially if they match what SSG did. So they only really need a few rounds here to still have like a statistical good shot at making this a close series. It's not the end of the world, but things have to change. I'm a little worried at the speed at which Parabellum had to call that timeout, obviously not playing up to their style of game. And I mean, that's that's pretty sensible if you've watched the way that these teams have played. If you go back to the very first play day and then you look at the second play day, the one thing that Parabellum did not have to deal with was that Azami ban. Mm. She was open in both of the matches that they've played on border so far. Well. Sometimes one operator can change everything, really. And it's been, again, it's placed both defense and attack because both teams have to go through the motions. 
when they just see when we get to round six or round seven rather they will have to defend without the asami themselves but the goal for space station is to establish such a big round lead and confidence in the server momentum as well to be like we can deal with that when we get there and also they're prepared for it because they went into this match knowing or thinking that they would ban out this operator in particular to counteract parabellum setups bombsite has been changed to ventilation instead and that now means that a different attack will come out from Space Station. We're both on unknown territory from both teams now. And Asian playing a bit of a recalcitrant inside a break room. Here's the footstep rotation on towards the east stairs inside Anna. Clone, Gemini clone that is. Not a real player. Well, Asian's discomfort inside of security leads him to this vigil roll to try and waste time. One thing Space Station's done very effectively for, through these first two rounds is gather that information to then be able to make something come of it. An opening pick. Both rounds so far for Space Station. And they've got all but one drone at their disposal, too. They've only lost a single one. So good management at this point. To go with the operator lineup that's brought out by Space Station and to help enable that info gathering, they have a logic bomb that'll go off by the Dokubi. Yeti on drone work, so letting his gadget do most of the talking as Hot and Cold creeps up through the main lobby. And we'll see a multitude of doors that have been barricaded off. Eska takes a whole lot of damage, but as Oryx, the fastest operator in the game, he can get away quite safely. That he can, of course, but so low HP, that's not gonna put well because one more bullet and you're out for the count. No healing on the defensive or attack inside from this matchup so far. With a minute and twin left on the clock, Kool-Aid holding down Amory, a crucial position as it oversees the bomb site itself. Blast, of course, is nearby an archive side to follow or to follow up rather. He has the sound on the member of his of oh. SSG, but no angle. Well, that's gonna drop depending on what happened with the sledge there, but does not end up coming to be. Instead, he finds Rampy with a good bit of patience on that hatch. Hot and cold now the one in pursuit, but he doesn't look the right way. Blaz easily feasts off of that. Asian was the intended target for Hot and Cold. Bosco will get him instead. Now it's Kool-Aid with a bit of sloppiness. Yeti all of a sudden making it work. Blaz a 4K, and it's him versus Fultz. This is gonna be the showdown. There's still two other players from Parabellum in this server, but do they matter? You're gonna look for the ace, and Blaz gets it! Every single kill in the server, it gives Parabellum their first round after the timeout as well. That to do, and that timeout seems to have done the job that they needed, and I mean, that's the round that they really, really had to get in the back right now. It's gonna also give you a bit of more of like a relief on their faces as they're saying, okay, we're not gonna go 0-3, we can still, you know, find our footing in this matchup. But it comes off a massive play from Blaz, like pretty much individually saving that round. And sure, he was playing off his teammates, got some trades, move around the map, etc. Got ha uh, kills both vertically and horizontally. But we need all members of Parabellum to show up because that's when they thrive the most. They give me a little bit of a Astralis vibe where they can play off each other extremely well when they're all firing the same um, cylinders. But when it's just an individual component, that's when I feel a bit for them. And right now, the scoreboard, it tells that tale of a single hero. And right now, that is Blast. Ventilation, or it's not another ventilation, rather. Ventilation got one, so it's now bathroom time instead. It was where the majority of the attackers were from SSG last round, but this time, it'll be where the bomb set will be instead. Well, a rotation through the bomb sites so far for Parabellum. And I mean, if it works, it works. You can keep going to other parts of the map. I mean, you drew them into bathroom, even though that wasn't the actual bomb site. Now it is. Down below. Down below. Down below. I wonder what was discussed on that timeout, as we've mentioned before, that sometimes timeouts are uh, more motivational. Sometimes they're more about mindset. Sometimes they are more about strategy. I don't think the strategy of Parabellum was really lacking. I mean, they didn't look as comfortable as we pointed out on mm. that defense. They couldn't roam, and that's a big part of this Azami ban. Oh, An entry from Sonic, or for uh, Space Station, rather, but Doc gets his C4 ripped out of his hands. Kool-Aid the first kill, but he's traded out by Hot and Cold. Nobody really gains an advantage in that regard. You lose the Mute, and you lose the Yana. I would argue that that's a bigger loss oh. for Space Station, but Asian has been playing in this same spot inside of security, and he's been getting picked clean. Bosco took those words from Super on the desk uh, very personally right now because four kills is enough to give him the most kills of anybody on Space Station. 
Yeah, finding great success right now. And I mean, the Dokebi phone call came out and he, basically Bosco heard the sound through the door slash barricade and got that wall bang. It's an easy kill, really. A bit unfair, if you will, because sound only really works one way in that situation because you cannot have that ring on the defense. That is an attacker gadget only. Blaz still in this rat spot. He's been remaining elusive through this entire map so far. It's half of the round to go. Space Station will double up on trying to take control of the stairs through office. They then need to translate that towards this bathroom bomb site. There's an avenue into workshop that's been created through that soft wall, so extending the bomb site out for Parabellum. The thing is right now, Parabellum don't have a whole lot of map control with that verticality from the block above. That just means the bomb site itself is gonna be, well, nowhere is really gonna be safe. Eska fighting for his life, has to run around and just gamble. No one's holding him stuck, but look at this. PB, they have left the bomb site entirely. They have no real leg to stand on, and SSG could just drop and plant. These two bomb sites, this and then the Events Workshop bomb site, are so ripe for retakes. We see it time and time again. Will it pay off for Parabellum? They trail in numbers, and now they will lose the plot in terms of timing as the final third. 33 seconds become the final 45 as the diffuser goes down hot and cold the first kill Bosco in as well it's Blaz as the last man he got the ace for the team in the previous round but the jig is up they know where he is a logic bomb goes off and all the noise that emits will get him spotted by hot and cold space station might have taken their foot off the gas for round number three but they find the pedal again and they're up 3-1 you really have to live and die on the floor above the bomb site on border because once you lose the vertical control, unless you've killed all the soft destruction operators, well, the bomb site is no longer yours. That's what you saw right there. PB had to run away or fight the vertical angles that are so favorable for the person up above. And they're also losing or getting traded in their opening duels right now. SSG are challenging them one to one. And PB are actually going to go back to the same bomb site for the second time. Round number one and two. Both were armory defenses. Round number four and number five, both are going to be bathroom defenses. And they're not really finding success so far on this pattern. They have to keep changing things up. It can't just be down to a, oh, this kill or this gunfight didn't go in our favor. Oh, this guy got lucky with sound on the window wall bang, maybe. It has to come down to the bigger things, the strategical setup, the trades, how close or how far are you from a teammate? Because I know right now in Rainbow Six Siege, it's a very chaotic game, very aggressive. And it's all about playing off one another. If you are more than a two second sprint away from a teammate you're arguably too far away to help your teammate he gets into a fight he loses that fight he's gone then if you're too far away you gotta pick that exact same 50 50 gunfight and when you're on defense on border you gotta play close together have a cross or have a trade otherwise you're just playing 4v5 and that's where SSG really are pushing their buttons yeah i mean i, I would argue that the supporting cast of space station is showing up huge Absolutely. yeti and bosco combining for eight kills through four rounds is Let's not mince words here. It's quite unusual for yeah. both of these players. Going all the way back to Yeti's days on Sonics, he wasn't responsible for getting the kills, but there were a lot of opportunities where he still struggled to do so. The fact that he and Bosco are leading the charge right now in terms of kills might not be a great thing, because obviously Rampy and Fultz are the two players on Space Station that you expect to be topping the charts, especially with Hot and Cold there in tow. But it at least shows that there's that depth for Space Station. When they were at their best, the argument for Space Station being the best team at the world, at, best team in the world at the time, was their depth. They could play anything on any map and excel. It's been a while since we've been able to say that about Space Station, but in this matchup so far, it sure seems to ring true. That it does. And don't forget the SSG clutch factor. They were the most clutch team for a while across the entire world. And I, I wouldn't say that they've lost that touch, so to speak, but it hasn't been their saving grace in more recent history. They are finding themselves being outbeat in those clutch moments by some teams, but right now, they're doing really good across the board. Good information game here as well. Hot and cold with a nice drone up above. Sees Asian and his movement. You can relay that information. You can try and go for a catch here and again play for that man advantage. It's the worst game so far for Asian of all of the matches that he's played. Mind you, there's only three at this point, but okay. still, bad time for him to be having a bit of an off game. It's one of those two star studded. Uh, acquisition. Oh, no! Me. Along with Doc, Asian gets hot and cold right as he looks in the wrong direction. But the good news is that it's yet again a trade. Space Station loses hot and cold, but they managed to pick off both Doc and Kool-Aid. Eska trades 70%, 60% of his HP to get the kill onto Yeti. Again, that supporting cast for Space Station will need to be huge. Bosco, the one in the driver's seat for his team. Rampion Fultz still alive as well, so there are threats on the board. 
Yep, one member of PB is still up above creeping and they don't really know his whereabouts. They both play the sound game right now. Drone is coming out from SSG, but it's droning the wrong direction. It's clearing out the archives off his portion of the top floor. Asian could either hold the cross, go for a flank, or fall back towards the bombs. But remember, the buck is alive, so verticality is going to be the name of the game. Esk is going to hold it down. It all comes down to Asian's flank later on. Oh, and there's Bosco again! Seven kills to his name, and with the diffuser in hand, he'll rely on Rampy and Fultz to do Overwatch. Blaz and Asian to retake. Different positions on the map, one above, one below. Blaz very close, but he can't get the read on the players inside of the bathroom. Two of them watching in that direction. Blaz sees the buck, but it's Bosco with three kills on the round. Eight so far through this map, showing up huge when the team needs it. It's 4-1 Space Station. I mean, it must be fun to play Ace Heart Support on Border because just like with Coastline, it's a map where you get to actually have fun in the game and try and seek out your gunfights. <laughs> but one thing is having the opportunity to take these gunfights. Another is how Bosco are just straight up winning them off the bat. Walks in first entry. Sure, he has a follow-up. He has a teammate right by his shoulder, but he doesn't need them. Every single time, either he plays off someone else, like in that final one versus three, or he just walks in and gets the job done himself. That is 8 and 1 on the board for Bosco. He's also carrying the diffuser, planting the diffuser on occasion, and doing the drone work when there's downtime. So I would say SSG, you're doing a really good job at what we call leapfrogging, where you have a guy drone in the entries, then the entries, they slow down the whole angle, so they start droning, then the person that droned him in all the way back in spawn, they can leapfrog up, and you can play much closer together because of that. Because SSG, they are playing very, very close, like a room apart, if anything. They're still caught in the crosses, they're holding the roamers, they're finding all the information that they need. They're basically winning the first minute and a half of every single round, whether it be a kill, whether it be map control, or whether it be their pacing. They're hitting the marks in one of those three areas every single time, and people are struggling against it so far. We are back on ventilation, or downstairs ventilation, should I say. It is where Parabellum found their only round victory so far was after that timeout. And then, well, it was double bathroom downstairs. That didn't work. Change things up again. Aggressive lineup, the Vigil, the Alibi, the Oryx. We are clearly trying to fight SSG every single chance we can. We're just not winning them. I mean, even Doc on Smoke has the FMG instead of the shotgun. We just need gunpower, but we need it to actually land. We get a good read on Asian playing inside of security still by that banana position. The drone right behind him as the cloak runs out and Fultz giving information. There's a buck on the board. A drone gets swatted away. Asian might think that he's free and clear, but there's yet another one of those pests in there watching for him. Space Station will need to double up if they want to capitalize off of this. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Asian looking the wrong way and an open window allows Fultz an opening pick. Space Station right now in great shape to take five of these six rounds on attack. Yeah, that's the drone right there. The information game just gives them so much value in that position. Now Kool-Aid, he has to try to find something else. I mean, he might jump out the window, but there's not really anybody there from Space Station because they're all around the security break room area of the map. But there's so much phantom pressure. Wall downstairs and passport has been opened up. Windows and doors across both sides of the map have been opened earlier in the round. So PP are basically guessing as to where SSG might be. And look at this. They aren't really in any of the directions that PP are holding. They don't really have any real information as to where the attack is coming from. That's not going to bode well. Sites are lined up with a minute to go. The calm before the storm, potentially. Asian, the only one that has fallen so far. Both Doc and Asian, a combined three and ten. That's not what you want to see from these two new acquisitions. Especially when they are off and on these rolls that are a requirement that they get kills. Doc may be playing a bit more sheltered minutes here on defense, allowing Blazin, particularly Kool-Aid, to excel off-site. Blazin, in particular, has earned it, but all five of his kills came from a single round. So that's obviously papering over the fact that consistency has been a huge issue for Parabellum, and the kills really do often speak for themselves. Blaz, though, picking up one onto Yeti before getting traded right back. Space Station an advantage that's taken away by Doc, and Fultz ensures that he's doing his best to keep it close. They're in tandem now, working together, but Bosco falls, and then Fultz will be right after. Parabellum snag the final round of that first half and prevent an absolutely lopsided first six rounds for Space Station. Still, SSG emerges with a 4-2 score as we switch sides. A 4-2 is what 
we know worst case, that's what I was like, PP needs that 4-2 to go into their, their own attack inside because they can show up and attack. But that final round really looked like SSG had. It was a 5 versus 4, verticality was established, they had cleared the entire top floor basically, and they were just about to hit the bomb side. But then Parabellum, they were taking these fights upstairs and on the main stairs, and then it became a bit of a chaotic fest. And it comes down to, well, Bosco lost his first ever gunfight basically because he was outswung by Melusi, and that kind of sealed the deal as the case was dropped in a tough position to be recovered. Now we have to see SSG, have they done as much groundwork on their defensive half as on their very impressive attacking side because they will need to win here as well to seal the deal for themselves on border and take down Parabellum's win streak on this map. They're starting in bathroom. That is often the case when you go to border, where defenders will start, you mentioned Parker, the castle and Asami are these formidable operators because you can change the layout of the map. Well, Asami being banned just means that they will bring the castle instead, and that's going to help mitigate some of those positions and some of those angles and you know enable others. Other than that, it's going to be the Capcan, my eyes are upon, because if PP pushes too fast or chases somebody, well, those Capcan traps can take you out really quickly. There's nothing really that abnormal about the attacking lineup, but go back a year or so ago, <laughs> maybe a little bit longer, and show the average Rainbow Six enjoyer <laughs> this defender lineup. Castle, Capkin, Oryx, and Alibi. And they're not necessarily troll picks. This was back when Oryx's pick rate was in the basement, as was Capkin's. Alibi was used in large part for some gimmicks here and there on certain bomb sites, yeah. but it really was the 1.5 scope that was given to her that elevated her pick rate, along with that deployable shield being so valuable. So it, it is just fascinating as a side note for me to see this. Ooh. Yeti gets slaughtered by Kool-Aid. Jameson on one today with that shot, but then he's immediately killed by Rampy, who then gets out of there on the fastest operator in the game. Back to an even score line. That's basically a trade for these two teams, but still, Asian will fall to Fultz on defense. Parabellum not having the best success on this attack as now it's Doc swatted away. Fultz from the same position inside of Armory putting such a hurt on the chances of Parabellum. Yeah, I mean, you said it, the 1.5x goes really hard on this weapon. The fire rate is so quick that any bullet will hit your head. Well, you're out for the taking, off for the count rather. Esk inside of break room, uh, fighting the member inside of office. I believe that's the Oryx of Rambi. They're holding on top floor right now. SSG are not surrendering it. They know they can hold it down for a bit longer at the very least, or maybe get a kill more on the board, but they've done a great job on their own already. They've basically won the round for the team. The anchors might not need to do much this round. We'll have to see if PB can clutch it out. Eska hears the Nitro Cell go off, and he still can't escape it. Bosco, yet another kill, marching towards 10. Blaz will walk right in, beheads Bosco. A nice shot, and this is why Blaz was so highly touted when he came over from all the way in Europe. It's a good read now, and it is a very good read, but look who gets out of there. The Oryx just scampers away. You know why that is? Because he's the fastest operator in the game. Almost as fast as the fire rate of the T5. Rambi gets the final kill. It's 5-2 for Space Station as SSG comes out on top of their very first defense. Very well played. I mean, PB, they just look like they're kind of falling apart when they lose those opening engagements, and it looked really good for them. Kool-Aid got that opening kill on the break door, and then he swung the second of Rambi inside of office and lost that one immediately after. So when you gain the lead, well, it was immediately given up again. They also lost their only Harbridge member on the lineup because they didn't bring any secondary Harbridge operators or secondary pieces of utility. And then the drone work from PB just seems to either be missing or a little bit lackluster. I don't really know how Fultz was enabled or, or was allowed rather to get two kills inside of Armory back to back like that. Either they didn't know he was there or they knew he was there and just lost the gunfights. We got a, a question. Who will secure more plants, Bosco or Kool-Aid? Well, Bosco got two down. Kool-Aid has zero so far. Yep. I mean, the people so far are correct. Both with great hair in that photo, by the way. Honestly, Kool-Aid could be a model. Kool I'm going to say it. He could sell shampoo. He is sure. my he, my favorite Twitter user. Yeah? Kool-Aid. Okay. Well, it goes back to a joke that we had. One time he... I can't remember what he said, but he used to have the soldier from TF2, Team Fortress 2, mm -hmm. the better TF2, not Titanfall 2. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. Titanfall 2 is fine, but TF2, Team Fortress 2 is better. He used to have the soldier as his avatar, and he used to say some unhinged things on social media, as a joke, obviously. Mm -hmm. Not unlike Suzaku used to. Not unlike uh, Shabazz does now. But either way, I used to call him my favorite Twitter user. That was the whole story.
and it's a great story, and I'm glad that you're all here to hear it. Thank you for sharing it, but no Everyone. one asked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Oh. First kill goes to Yeti onto Eska. Everything falling into place for Space Station so far on this round. Yeti was first to die last round, but in a very similar spot over by security, he will persist. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna suck if you ask it because you're playing the Nomad because you want the map control to establish those air jabs so that you can't get flanked and you die first. So now the map is all for the taking for the defenders and we're playing very aggressive if we're a space station. I mean, even though Rambi is getting joined, he's holding down the soft wall, no one is a member outside that area. Not gonna allow a Sledge to open up the wall, not gonna allow them to add any further pressure. Doc finds it comes to Yeti, who's moving a little bit too much inside of 90. Rambi looking to trade it back again. The confidence right now, Rambi, is through the roof. Smashes his way back into Fountain. Surveying what damage has been done to the soft wall in office. Parrot Bellum is not very keen to take an engagement from there. Instead, their focus is on other parts of the map. Asian will come up as Kool-Aid is on Armory Wall. Rampy still persisting. It's Doc to fall. Then Blaz will come in next. But you have to pick your poison, left or right. Oh, again. Or how about down? Bosco breaks double digits with a well-placed Nitro Cell. It was what lays beneath that was the issue for Parabellum. Not anything left or right. Now it's Asian to follow through with a minute to go. But there's nobody up top, and he soon discovers that. Bosco really is locked in right now, whether it's ensuring on the support on the attacking side or just prepping C4, playing up his teammates on the defensive side. He's finding so much value every single round and consistently so. And that's an important aspect because consistency is what PB is missing right now. Sometimes they hit their marks and get what they need and sometimes they don't. 1v3 for Kool-Aid. Not gonna get it. Zero. And it's Bosco to finally end the round. Yet another kill, 11 for him. Man's fighting for his life inside of the server. And Parabellum go to border, and I guess SSG just had the answer. Ban Azami. That's it. Knock them off their stride. The first two rounds being so decisive, and I think so surprising mm. for Parabellum, is that they had to burn that time out. They have not been able to course correct for six rounds now. And it's a shame if you're a fan of Parabellum, because they called that timeout early enough to try to settle themselves down. They get two rounds of the next four. Yeah. But they look uncomfortable on attack. They are just not having engagements go their way. On attack in particular, they seem to lack information. Yes, agreed. I feel like they could slow it down in this case, right? Because the rounds are ending in the first minute usually, then two members die off like, out of nowhere essentially. We slow it down, first of all. Use all your drones, right? Try and do like a all 10 drones die before we die challenge, impossible scenario, because right now you got six, seven drones alive when the round effectively is over. Maybe play an execute based operator, right? Trying to help you get towards the bomb side. Whether it's gonna be the Ossa, whether it's gonna be more flashbangs. I know I know Ying is banned, for example. You can do smoke grenades, a glass, a sense, anything really. Try and get off the 1v1 individual gunfights. Whether it's playing Lion Dokupi and try and increase your odds of winning a gunfight. I do like the Nook formation. I, I, I want to believe that it's going to give you some value, but I just feel like they're struggling too much to get inside the building to enable this Nook on border. Really bad performance so far from some of the gunners from Parabellum against this SSG team. I mean, some difficulties. Kool-Aid found success in the spot previously, oh. but and just to get away with his life intact after shrugging off some damage. Parabellum need to take control of security as quickly as they can. Already 45 seconds have fallen by. They know the way that this setup is. They managed to take a piece of the defense away with those Selma charges thrown out. Hot and cold can see that. Now is a long line of sight all the way from Fountain. He gets droned out, or rather, his teammate gets droned out. He himself not spotted. Light reinforcement goes in onto the armory wall. That's the last one. Space Station kept that in their back pocket to try and read this assault and seemingly have done so correctly. It's a very good crossfire hold from Hot and Cold and Rambi playing out of Office and Fountain because they can basically take a step back to eliminate an angle or step forward and help widen that position. So when PB goes to their presumed execute here, they're gonna be in a cross between two or three members. Unless a grenade really hits the spot, they gotta force this against the odds. But a minute and 30 to go, time is slipping away. They gotta go soon, otherwise it's not gonna work. No, there goes the Toxic Canister from Rampy. Things will need to heat up. Now Foltz has been downed and finished off by Eska. 
involved in the first altercation, but this time on the right side of it. Now it's Yeti to go. The dominoes for Space Station falling. Asian trades out Bosco for Eska. I don't know if that's particularly worthwhile in terms of operator style, but in terms of man count, it certainly is. Hot and cold down. Rampy, the last one standing. He gets a single kill, and he can't get more than that. Doc reads him well. Parabellum's still alive. That's their third round. They have a mighty hill to climb to keep themselves in this game and in contention to pick up even a single point. But that round's going to help. No, it is. I mean, it really comes down to the fact that they managed to kill the members of HSG that weren't in the crossfire. They won their ones because the last two members are the most important ones. It was Hot and Cold and Rampy that had the cross and fountain office, but if you kill all the members around them, it falls apart. It's so got to play retake on the bomb side. One member tried to run back, it was Hot and Cold, but the Oryx got shut down and Rampy left alone inside of, uh, inside of office with the smoke FMG. Couldn't find his way back to the side either because all three members of PB were swinging him from all the corners around the map. Downstairs we go. The benefit right now for SSG is that they are a match point that is being threatened. One mistake for PP that is too great to be fixed, well, it's over. And they can go through bombsite and bombsite and bombsite. And then at the very like worst case scenario for SSG, we're in overtime. So they can really try and just throw anything at PP right now and just win it off that. Or they can just have Bosco Shubby has been so far, and he'll just seal the deal for them because Bosco really has been the key member today in this particular matchup. Attackers objective is to locate a bomb. All right, could this be the final round for Space Station? Pick up three huge points. That'll be so vital for them in the standings. Knock Parabellum off their stride and a potential tumble down the NAL standings for PB, depending on how the other three matches today go. But Parabellum need to show that same level of moxie, that same level of confidence that they had in their matchups against both OXG and Xset. And I really do think there's something to the desk saying that if you're Space Station, you only really go to this map if you feel like you are confident enough to make it work. There was there were two two schools of thought that were floated. Yeah. One with Yeti, you're still unsure your map pool. You might as well go to border, try it out. The other was that you figured out Parabellum and you're going to go here to humble them on the map. It's oh. late so far, and it doesn't seem like Yeti is having any real problems today, especially on defense. He picks off Doc, and that's the first kill. That it is. It's a beautiful shot as well. So quick in the reflexes. And yeah, you always wonder, are they geniuses or are they fools? But so far, HSG are proving us all wrong. They look weak in play day one. They looked a little bit weak in play day two. But right now, right here, they are looking a lot stronger, playing confidently, playing aggressively, taking their gunfights, losing this one. It's hot and cold to blast, but they still got the numbers. Falls on one HP, can be weakened by anything hitting his body. A single flashbang, for example, but no, he stays alive and gets a kill to Asian. And now it's Blaz to absorb an awful lot of damage, has some difficulties with the default cam as the bullets just whiz by him. They know exactly where he is. Who's going to be the one to get the remainder of his HP? Eska still there, oh. trades out most of his health for the single point of HP that Fultz had. That is correct. Literally was sitting on one or two HP. So I would still say very worthwhile for Space Station. The remaining three players on SSG's side all full, waiting intently. Oh, and there goes a Capkin the trap. trap. Oh my, Parabellum. They're not looking, Nick. They're not looking down at all. Blaz sitting on 40 HP. He'll get softened up through the wall. And he retreats. Looking for a 10th kill. No jump scares from Capkin Traps up to this point. Space Station so solid at the moment. Just being very patient. It's Yeti to get the first kill and Yeti to get the last. Well, that was a quick one. Space Station topple Parabellum. 7-3 to three on the map that Parabellum has played three times now. But for PB, third time is not a charm. They lose border for the first time this season. That's a big three points for SSG. It is, and I mean, I have to say that final round, if you're running to a capture trap on top main stairs, and then you don't check the next door you walk through, and there's another capture trap, I feel like you're, either you're mentally out of it, you're stressed out in the server, or you're just not respecting the Capcan itself because you can't get hit by two Capcan traps back to back within 10 seconds and not check the doorway. And we spoke about the Capcan earlier on where it can be this massive factor of an operator if you're going too fast through the map. Well, it looked like PP on their attack side, they needed to take it slower because the slow rounds, or the slow round that they played on our attack actually worked out and they won that one. There's obviously gonna be a lot to digest about that matchup. Parabellum can't be very happy with it, I don't think. But, I mean, there were still some promising signs that we saw. The desk, 
Well, they're the experts. They're going to be able to talk about exactly what we witnessed after this break. We'll be back in just a few. Welcome back to the Rainbow Six North American League Analyst Ask Doa, Jesse Jacob Super here with you as a usual this week. And guess what? The coin and Super looking pretty smart these last couple matches. Yep. I believe being the only ones to, to get it right so far. So what, what, what was it about your intuition that led you to pick Space Station here and get the win? All logic would tell you that Space Station won't win that game. There's no reason you go border. There's none at all. Hmm. But I don't believe in logic. I trust my gut. <laughs> And my gut said, well, my gut said Parabellum 2, honestly. But, like, you know, <laughs> I just I just couldn't fathom why you would play that map if, if you didn't have a plan. It seemed like the plan was there, though. The counter strat was there. We saw the Azami band come in, and, and uh, Space Station uh, got the business done uh, much quicker, I think, than anyone was expecting. It was, uh, I thought at least it would be a pretty close series, but it ended up being uh, very one-sided, didn't it? 
Yeah, it really didn't feel like anybody could get anything going on the side of Parabellum. There was one round where obviously Blaz popped off, got the ace. Otherwise, though, everybody was struggling to really get up there on the on the scoreboard. Um, the Azami ban really struggling for Asian. Obviously, he's been that player who's been uh, on that role so, so often. But with yeah. it taken away, couldn't really find that impact in the room. True enough. Well, over in Vegas, we have Bosco standing by to have a bit of a chat with us. Uh, Bosco, congrats on the win today, uh, getting it done in short order over Parabellum. Like, uh, Space Station seemed very prepared coming into this one. Uh, did, with a with 7-3 win, it, did everything go to plan? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I would say everything went to plan. I mean, we just, you can hear me? Yeah, okay. yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we just, like, played our game on that map, to be honest with you. We didn't do anything, you know, specific for them. Maybe our bands around them were specific for them, but, I mean, we just loaded into the map and played our game. Obviously, it wasn't uh, a flawless week one for you guys. You had a, a really tough lo or a tough uh, win that you had to really fight for, and then another loss last week. You know, what was the big thing that you tried to work on in the uh, in the break that we had that you've been trying to bring here for week number two? Um, I that first week, I, even though we had some tough games, I, I still think we played really well. Uh, Sonics, you know, they're looking really good. They're a great team, and they played Skyscraper. You know, they, they played a style on that map that's different than most teams, I would say. And then OXG, you know, we had a great game against them. We kind of just let it slip and let them come back. But, um, I mean, just focusing on the same thing that we've been focusing on from the start, and that's just, you know, uh, teamwork, and every, everyone being on the same page. And uh, we really were focusing on uh, keeping pace for this week, and I, I think we showed that really well this matchup. Uh, you mentioned that you guys didn't really change anything for Parabellum. Were you at all nervous, kind of just going in a border map, like the only map they've played, or were you just confident that you guys are better at border, you're the better team, doesn't matter what map? Uh, yeah, I mean, we were we were just confident that we were better, especially on that map. I mean, uh, there wasn't anything crazy from the VODs uh, of their border from the first two weeks. Like, sure, they won against good teams, but... Uh, it didn't look like anything that would deter us from wanting to play a map that's like really good for us, you know. Hmm. And uh, with the way that they were playing CC with the zombie, we figured that just taking that away from them would would you know free up. Um, it would just make it easier to get map control from them, and that's exactly how it was. Like they they weren't able to hold on to CC nearly as long or the same way they were the first two first two play days. So you've got a third of the stage already down, and for all of the different reasons that you wanted to bring Yeti into the roster, give me the status report from your perspective. How's that working out? Um, it's working out great. I mean, I, I love having Yeti on the team. We all love having him here. The energy he brings is pretty unmatched, I would say, from like any past teammate of mine. I mean, he, he's just a huge upper guy. You know, he, he tries to bring everyone up, keep the vibes up, and I mean, he's doing just that. And uh, I, he fits into the roles that we need to fill really, really well. Um, and yeah, he's, he's just helping us be a better team, and it's great. All right, well, glad to hear that's working out. Glad to see you getting the win today over Parabellum. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us, and uh, we'll catch you next time. All right, thanks, guys. All right, there you go. Uh, Bosco from Space Station Gaming, and uh, you know he's, he's kind of casual about the whole prepping uh, for uh, Parabellum and all that. I feel like sometimes pro gamers, uh, you know, they, they're, they're not willing to give us a whole story, right? They're like, oh, yeah, well, we didn't really do a lot. We just kind of showed up and played our game. It's like, come on. Come on, Super, you, you know there's more prep that goes into it than that. It, I, yeah. I have definitely given answers where I don't want to say exactly what we did to kind of prepare for a game. Exactly. But, you know, I, I do kind of buy that maybe they just thought they're a better team. It's probably it be. wouldn't be my strategy, but it worked out for them. Genuinely think that a zombie ban threw PB for more of a loop than they were anticipating because it changes being able to stay stationary in one room, create a fortress for yourself mm -hmm. and force the team to come to you and makes them or forces them into a position where they're far more mobile. Best thing about SSG was they were able to actually trade back every time Parabellum got an entry kill. And when Space Station got the opening frag, there was no answer back from PB. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's take a look at a couple replays uh, that kind of illustrated a little bit of that. Uh, we're going to take a look at rounds four and five together, and this was where some entries come in from Parabellum, but Space Station handled it quite well, right? I'd call it a, a really big step up in coordination from the way that they played back versus OXG, because that was probably the biggest issue that I took with the way that they played. As soon as they get one opening frag or Parabellum finds a kill, someone is instantly there for SSG to find the, the, this kill initially. So look up top, inside armory lockers, there's the first frag, immediately Foltz goes down, 
and hot and cold is able to refrag instantly as soon as Kool-Aid comes back in. It happens round four, and then it also happens again on round five. It's it's just the kind of back and forth style of play that makes it seem like SSG is more on the same page than they were just last week. Exact same thing happens round five. As soon as the opening kill is there, there is a trade all the way down east, down the long hallway. It feels like SSG is on more of the same page than they were originally, but it's just small incremental steps like this that I think is, is going to allow SSG to function like the new rule team that they were trying to come into the stage to be. Bathroom seems like a really rough spot for Parabellum because it was a site that SSG went three for three on, two for two on the attack, and when they were pushing it, it felt like they really did want to focus in on getting that top floor control, dropping down into Bathroom and getting that uh, kit down on the ground. And it felt like Parabellum just didn't really have a good answer for it. Even if they were winning some of those early rounds, even if you get that uh, that opening, the drop always came through and it was always uncontested. So definitely something that Parabellum might want to look at a little bit later and uh, perhaps try to sharpen up if they get back to this map ever again. Uh, I've said this before, but I think when you bring in a new players, usually your attack is going to be the harder thing to learn because attack revolves a lot more around chemistry, that kind of thing. And that was kind of interesting to me because last stage, SSU were actually the number two ranked attack team. Mm -hmm. They were just horrible on defense. Right now, they're actually playing pretty solid defense, but their attack was near the bottom. If we see SSG start putting together these attacks to where they're getting near or at the level that they were last stage, all of a sudden they're a team that plays defense pretty well and a team that attacks really well. And that's an SSG team that I feel like SSG fans probably haven't seen for a while. Yeah, and for Parabellum, who were already really highly rated on defense coming into this through two border games, it's really unfortunate that the time we see our first clutch in the NAL comes in this match when Parabellum get blown out of the water. That was one of their only defensive wins. And the other one felt like what? It was round six that one time where it felt like this is the, uh, like a really late execute attempt from Space Station that just doesn't work out. Parabellum come ahead in the trade game. It's, it's really unfortunate that we get that kind of action we finally crack the ace marker open for the first time this stage, and it comes at a time where SSG are just playing on a different level. I think, too, I mean, if you look at the stats, one last little point with that is we did see Doc and Asian down at the bottom numbers-wise this time around, and, you know, it's like that. The so this is the sophomore effort for their pro performance. This is the second week. You come in with high expectations. You get thrown a little bit. Things can collapse a little bit easier if you don't have as much experience at pro level. I feel like we saw a little bit of that, too, but... Nonetheless, still good players. We'll see if they can bounce back tomorrow. For now, though, we're going to take a quick break, and then we get set for our third map of the day. It's going to be Astralis taking on TSM. Should be a good one. That'll be in just a few here on NAL. Don't go anywhere.